Put plainly, cultural cringe is when you adopt a new culture out of embarrassment for your own. I don't use anecdotes very often in my videos, but I think describing my own experience here would be most beneficial. So I think back to when I was in school. The majority of the students, ethnically, were either white or Native American. Yet it would have been a source of utter hilarity if someone came to school wearing a kilt or a headdress. At the very least, it would have been a novelty or an irregularity, something that you'd only see in the gymnasium on special occasions, not something that you'd see every day. There was no representation for these cultures whatsoever for the vast majority of my school years, despite these two groups making up the majority of the student body. Yet there was very much a uniform that was ever-present, and you know exactly what I refer to. Every 14-year-old was a wannabe gangster. All these kids embraced African-American culture rather than their own clothes, music, outlook on life, and so on, completely embracing a culture that would have been completely alien to their grandparents and was a passing novelty to their parents. And you might be thinking this was just the popular kids and that the others were immune to this cultural cringe. But you would be wrong. The less popular kids were into anime and obsessed with Asian culture. So they were only opting for a different flavor of cultural cringe. In fact, they may have experienced a sort of double cultural cringe, since they not only rejected their own culture, but also the culture that the popular kids adopted as a substitute. And even on the off chance that you found a good old country boy wearing blue jeans and cowboy boots, that's also pretty far removed from any European roots as well. Both the white American and black American identities are quite separate from the culture of their homelands. And while it could be argued that it's good to innovate and try to start a new culture in the new world, it's hard not to see both of these Americanized identities as vapid and extremely materialistic. And just so I don't seem holier than thou, I will confess that I am also a victim of this cultural cringe. I may not have listened to the same rap music as the popular kids, but I loved new metal bands like Korn and Slipknot, which are heavily hip-hop influenced, and my favorite video games game series as a kid was Crash Bandicoot, and let's face it, Crash Bandicoot is hood-coded AF. When I last tried to discuss cultural cringe on this channel, I made it seem like I completely disavowed it, that it is something to reject wholeheartedly. Admittedly, I had conflicted feelings on it at the time, and still largely do. However, I am more certain now that this process is ongoing and all-consuming. When you realize the sheer scope of it, it becomes apparent that culture itself might just be cultural cringe. Perhaps it's inescapable. Even my own channel embodies it. Our acculturation continues, I say, as we go through our next wave of cultural cringe. Like a snake shedding its skin, we've just outgrown the previous incarnation. For myself and many others, we find the current iteration of culture embarrassing and thus we seek a new one. Are we not also undergoing cultural cringe this very moment? I notice that people are jumping ship at an alarming rate. They are ditching this sinking boat, this embarrassing culture, and grabbing onto whatever religious or political ideology claims to be its opposition. My argument is that cultural cringe is neither good nor bad. It is the nature of life in some respects. We may lack a solid foundation. People may shudder at their identities, then change them multiple times, shuddering several times over, as they bypass those new crafted personas as well. But such is life, the eternal return of cringe. In this urbanized void, we must become parkourists. Instead of jumping to conclusions, may we jump to introductions, enfold this new frontier, and may we have a better run this time around.